Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are so grateful for this moment that you've given to us that, Lord, we can go through your word. We thank you, King, in glory, because your word is life and your word is spirit. And Father, even as we look through your word this morning, we pray that you're going to touch our lives. We pray that, God, it will bring a transformation. And we pray, King, in glory, that it will give us life, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Be lifted, our Father, and be magnified in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. My name is Millicent Kaunda. Um, for those who are visiting us for the first time, and I thank God that uh, in this house, um, I'm a daughter, and I serve here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Today, I'd like us to look at Luke chapter 13, verses 10 to 17. Luke 13, verses 10 to 17. Thank you. Can we read together? One, two, let's go. On a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues. And a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hand on her, and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue leaders said to the people, there are six days for work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. The Lord answered him, you hypocrites, doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give it water? Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her? When he had said this, were humiliated. But the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was doing. Now, this story is a story of one day Jesus ministering. And as he was ministering, he was used to ministering most of the time out in the streets of Jerusalem. But on this particular day, he was on the synagogue. He was ministering in a synagogue, which was an equivalent of a church, like what we have here today. And so as he stood and uh, he ministered, he saw a woman coming in. And scripture says that this woman was double bent. And you know, I just tried to imagine what does it mean to be double bent. And in my imagination, this is what was coming in my mind. She must have been bent from the back, you know, and then bent at the back so that maybe the head was way closer to the feet. Double bent. In other words, even walking must have been a difficult thing to do. Even the fact that she could come to the temple that day, to the synagogue that day, was in itself a sacrifice because of the kind of challenge that she was going through. Now, the Bible does not tell us the name of this woman. It doesn't give us the name of this woman. It only tells us that there was a woman who walked into the synagogue who was double bent. In other words, she was only identified with what she was going through. 
she was identified with what she was going through. Now, I sought to find out what did the synagogue look like. Was it something that was exactly like the church where we are seated in? But I was discovering that it was not like the church we are seated in today. Because in the church we are seated in today, you can look on your either side of yourself and you'll find a brother seated there or a sister, a sister seated there. Now, in the olden days, in the Jewish traditional culture, this is what used to happen. Women were not allowed to get into the main place of the synagogue. It was only men. In other words, if we lived during the olden days, then this is what would be happening today. In this entire region where we are all seated, it would only be men who would be seated here. It would only be men. And so what would happen? You see that door that is outside there. Maybe you can just look behind that door. Right outside that door is where women used to sit. Yeah, and there used to be like a wall, either a short wall or something that was giving, um, uh, what well, something that was covering them, maybe with small two holes, so that if these women wanted to see what was happening in the synagogue, they'd need to peep through and see because they were not allowed in the synagogue with the men. In fact, the Jewish man would wake up in the morning and in their regular prayer, they would pray and say, we bless you Lord God who has not made me a gentile or a woman that was the kind of prayer that the Jewish man would pray in other words being a woman was a detested thing and they were not allowed anywhere near where the men were seated now the thing that was very amazing is that when they went back home then each one of them would be together with their husbands ironical isn't it yet in the sanctuary they would not be seated next to men and i think that is what our olden churches where we grew up i think that's where they borrowed that because when you walk into the church you find women are seated on one side and men are seated on the other side, actually, if you go up country, apart from deliverance churches where there is freedom, if you go up country, I come from a place which is basically or mainly seventh day, and women sit on one side, men sit on the other side. And so this was the scenario during that time. And as scripture says that Jesus saw this woman enter, I kept wondering how keen was Jesus to see the woman enter, yet the woman did not enter into the main sanctuary. How keen was Jesus? Now, in our lives, as we continue living this life, as we wait for the, coming, the second coming of Jesus Christ, many times we find ourselves being double-bent by so many things. We find our lives being double-bent, being clouded or crowded with so much pain, crowded with so much disappointment, crowded with so much hurt, until in as much as we walk into the sanctuary like we've walked in today, some of us are wondering, why am I still alive? Why? Because of the things that we are going through. Our lives could be covered with sin. Our lives could be covered with a lot of disappointments. Our lives could be covered with a lot of heartaches, with a lot of rejection, until we cannot be able to stand strong, stand upright, and really enjoy the life that God has given us. Yes, some of us are born again. It is okay. But still, the, the, the kind of uh, pains that we have gone through are causing us to be double-bent. And so we walk into church on a Sunday morning like we have walked today and we are expecting to walk out the same and continue with the same trend of life that has crowded us throughout the week. Now scripture, when you read the book, uh, the, the, the four gospels, you discover that Jesus when he was on earth, he always was on the mission of finding people who were made in the image of God, but that image had been obscured either by sin, obscured by heartaches, obscured by disappointments. He was out to look for such kinds of people. 
And what was he out to do with them? He was out to find them out so that he can wash them, so that he can develop them, and so that at the end of the day, the image of God that is inside of them would finally come out and they'd begin flourishing as the children of God that they were meant to be. Hallelujah. As I thought about it, I came across something. Ni wangapi wanakumbuka kitu kama hii? Wana asifiwe. Do we know this thing? Inaitwa nini? Film. Now, when we were growing up, ungepigwa picha. Now, that's for the sake of the young people in the house. Bwana asifiwe. <laughs> ungepigwa picha and then it would appear in a film that we used to call negative. Si tunakumbuka negative. It would appear in the negative and you'd wait for the photographer for another one week or even a month <laughs> so that they can go to a studio somewhere, take that particular film, this that we are seeing here, to a studio into a dark room, develop it, and after developing it, then they'll bring you your photo. And they'd give you a copy of your negative just in case you want to develop more photos. How many of us remember that? Ah, tuko wengi bwana asifiwe. Yes. Now, that image, once the photo would be taken, your image would be captured in the film. Am I right? In fact, many times you'd look at the film in the, in the light. You put some light and you check on the film and you'd see your image, but it's not exactly like you. It is a blurred image. It's an obscured image. It's until Iende Iyoshwe. Walikuwa natuambia tunaenda kufanya nini? Kuosha. Iende Iyoshwe so that then it will produce the right image of you. And we loved them, didn't we? Photographers would walk in the estate every other time to look for, especially girls, to take their photos. <laughs> you know? Now, Jesus is looking for people who, because the Bible says that he has created us in his image. Am I right? He has created you. He has created me in his image. According to the book of Genesis, chapter 1 from verse 26, the Bible says, let us make man in our own image. And then the Bible goes on to say, and maybe you can read, then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish of the sea. Let's leave that. Let's just look at part A. Let us make mankind in our image. When you get to verse 27, what does it say? Verse 27. Mm -hmm. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. In other words, you and I, he created us in his image. And his image is beautiful. His image is full of joy. His image is full of compassion. He created us. But many times, just like the film that I've given us or shown us today, many times our image is obscured because of the things that we go through in life. And so the Bible says that when he walked everywhere he went, he did good. He looked for people who were created in the image of God and he picked them out and he took them to his studio and he washed them clean and developed them so that his image in them became clearer. And this particular story that we have read is one such incident. A woman is walking into the synagogue definitely to sit where she was used to sitting. This was a woman who had gone through stress, but was not going to allow her stress to cause her not to come to the synagogue. She would have said, after all, I am double bent. I don't even have the energy to walk into the church. But she came anyway. 
she was not going to allow the things that were troubling her to cause her not to go to the synagogue. Bona sifiwe. Was she just coming like any other regular day? Yes, she was coming like any other regular day. Maybe it was a Sunday just like the other Sundays that had passed. And maybe the previous Sunday, if they used to go to the synagogue on Sundays, maybe the previous Sunday and the previous one, she had been at that synagogue and walked, she walked in when she was double bent and she walked out when she was double bent. But this particular one, Jesus was waiting for her. Bona sifiwe. Jesus was waiting for her. And Jesus was in the business of making her well. Jesus was in the business of making her well, even as she walked in. She was going to sit in a place where Maybe most people would not have seen her. Maybe the other rabbis were not even noticing her after all. But the Bible says that as she walked in that morning, or was it evening, whatever time it was, as she walked in, Jesus noticed her. And Jesus told her or called her to himself. Bonus if you will. Jesus called her to himself. Now what was beating me was this. Jesus knew that this woman could not walk well. Why didn't Jesus go to her? Why did Jesus call her to himself? Jesus knew, yes, that she had a struggle. But Jesus wanted to lift her faith by calling her to himself. This morning as we are seated in this place... Jesus is looking out for someone who is double bent. He is looking out for someone who has been going through struggles. He is looking out for someone whose heart is double bent because of the wounds, because of the disappointments, because of maybe some habits that you've tried to let go, but those habits are not going away anyway. These habits and these challenges that are in our lives that have caused his image in us to be obscured. He is looking out for you, and he's looking out for me. He is looking up for each one of us. And he wants to pick us. Maybe you've been beaten up in your marriage. You've been beaten up in your workplace. You've been beaten up in the streets. Yeah? You have tried this. You have tried the other. You are born again, but you're beginning to wonder and to ask, Lord, where are you? Haven't I been praying? Haven't I been fasting? Where are you? My house is just about to be closed. Where are you? My children are going haywire. Where are you? I've looked for a job all my life. Where are you? The doctors have said I have just a short moment to live. Where are you, Jesus? Where are you? I want to bring it to you today that as you walked into this place, Jesus is in the business of releasing life and he is saying, come to me. He is saying, come to me. He came in here today because he's in the business of finding people out. He is in the business of washing them clean through the blood of Jesus Christ by way of salvation. And he's the, in the business of developing people this morning so that his, his image in you can be clearer as you continue in life. Hallelujah. And every time as we read that scripture that we've just read, every time Jesus walked and did such kind of miraculous things, the Bible tells us that people were left astonished. People were left wondering, who is this man? And this morning, even as we are seated here, Jesus wants to do something in your life that the people who have been surrounding you will be wondering, who is this man who did it for you? Hallelujah. Who is this man who did it for you? When we look through scripture again, we discover that Jesus always looked out for people who were left out. Like in our story here today, 
women were left out. And worse still, if you were a woman, that was a challenge, challenge enough, but you were a woman who was double bent. You could not even walk properly, but Jesus was looking out for such kinds of people. And maybe we can just go back to verse, I think, 14, 15, 16 and 17, and we will read it and see. He looked out, indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. The synagogue leader said to the people, there are six days for work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. Now just hold it there before you go. As Jesus went healing on that particular day, you would expect everybody to celebrate that he has healed. But when we read here, not everybody was celebrating. Scripture says that there was a ruler. There's a version that calls him ruler. A synagogue ruler who was so angry. But now the funny thing is that even as he got angry, he was not talking to Jesus directly, but he is projecting to the crowd and telling the crowd, there are six days where you can be healed. Come and be healed on those days. In other words, he is trying to project, and no, as I read that, he is trying to project to the crowd, but in essence, the person he is talking to is Jesus. It is not really the crowd. It's like the way mamas in the homes normally do. Wakikosana na mzee. Unasikia anaanza kuangalisha mtoto. Eh? Wewe, endo uambie baba yako. The baba yake is seated there, you know? So the main thing is not for the baby or the child, but you're trying to communicate to your husband, but you do not know how to communicate. Kwa hivyo unapitia kuingine. That was what was happening with this ruler of the synagogue. He is telling the people there are six days for people to be healed. But as we go on the next verse, let's see the next verse. The Lord answered him, you hypocrite, doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give it water? Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her? What has he feeling? Realize, Jesus is not even mentioning the name of this woman, but he is calling her who? A daughter of Abraham. This morning as you're seated here, irrespective of what people have ever called you, the names they have given you, we want to give you another name oh, this morning. That you are a son of Abraham. You are a daughter of Abraham. And that which the Lord has released from his throne room this morning belongs to you. Buona asifiwe. There are those who have been called many names based on the things that you have been going through. But today we are changing that name. Realize the scripture does not say that this woman who is double bent. No, no, no. Jesus does not say double bent. Jesus is calling her a daughter of Abraham. This morning, Jesus is willing to call you a daughter of Abraham. He is willing to call you a son of Abraham because he has come this morning so that he can meet with you. He can develop his image in you. He is willing to deal with all those hearts that have been in your life. He is willing to deal with all those disappointments that you have gone through. He is willing to deal with literally everything in your life. Yes, he is here and he is saying this is for this son of Abraham this is for this daughter of Abraham the rulers may not be happy the rulers may not be happy why? because rulers set laws rulers set laws and they are never happy when those laws are broken and in our case here, there are rulers that will not be happy. 
No wonder scripture tells us in Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10 that we wrestle against principalities, against powers, against rulers. When Jesus, the son of the living God, will be getting into your life to transform it, all those principalities, all those rulers, all those powers may not be excited, but it is okay. We are not here to have them excited. We are here because the son of the living God is in the business of transforming lives. He is in the business of changing your situation this morning. He is in the business of changing what you have been going through. And as I come to an end, as I come to an end almost, <laughs> Jesus is in this place and he is wooing you with his grace. He is saying, come to me. There are those things that we have gone through and we have hidden them. We hide them by lifting our hands up when we are worshiping so that people will think I'm also worshiping God. But deep inside me there is pain, pain, pain. We hide them by wearing a mask of a smile. But deep inside me there is pain. And there is a question that you keep asking. Who will help me? out imagine whatever it is that you're hiding behind just like that wall that was hiding the women Jesus this morning can see through it just like he saw the woman in the women's section way far from where the men were sitting but he could see. And I was like thinking, maybe it would have been like our overflow out there. Someone who is walking from the gate to the overflow. And Jesus is standing here and he's saying, you woman, please come to me. Yes, we are all seated right here. But Jesus is able to see that which you are going through this morning. He is willing. He is willing to heal you this morning. He is seeing behind the dividing place. There are those of us, maybe people have called you a husband snatcher. <laughs> people have called you that beggar. Whenever you call your relatives, maybe you just want to say hello. They do not pick the calls because they are thinking, I'm a pig asimu tena kwa sababu anataka kuomba pesa. Don't know whether you've gone through that. Bona sifiwe. I have gone through it when we lost my dad. And there are times when things would be tough and you're trying to reach out to somebody wana kuona uki approach their doorsteps because we never had phones those days. You are approaching their doorsteps and they close the door behind because they have labeled you in a certain way. I remember we normally make a joke of it right now because God has blessed us but I remember there was a time when dad had passed on and there was so much trouble because mom was also unwell so much so much trouble and we were staying with a relative somewhere my siblings were staying with a relative somewhere and one of the days popo. popo so there was a popo that was ripe in the kitchen of that relative alafu kuku ikaja ika so when this mama was preparing the popo, she decided that he was a hemu ambayo ilikuwa imeliwa na kuku. Akaikata round vizuri, ndi akapatia my sister to eat. Wana yesu asifiwe. But I want to tell you today, irrespective of the label that you've been given by whoever has labeled you, when Jesus comes, he gives you the best. 
Bwana Yesu asifiwe. He gives you the best. When Jesus comes into your life, he changes your name. You will no longer be called yule mama wa mashida ama yule msichana wa mashida. You will no longer be called that, but he calls you the blessed one of the Lord. He is here today, Bwana asifiwe. And I say it as I'm winding up. I'm not going to go further than that. As I'm winding up, maybe you walked into this place. Maybe you have been walking Sunday in Sunday out and you are double bent yeah not double bent physically we can see you are standing strong we can see you are walking high but deep inside your heart you are double bent because of the struggles you are going through you are double bent because of the pain you are going through you have even been thinking I can even take my life you are double bent yeah I have these children what will I do with this child and maybe you've been contemplating even poisoning them and killing yourself because of the way things are. And even the economy right now is even making it worse. You're thinking, how am I going to make it in life? You are. Your life is double bent. The image of God in your life has been obscured. But Jesus is here because he wants to wash it. He wants to develop it. He wants to make your back straight because the Bible says that as the woman came to Jesus Christ, she was made whole. Hallelujah. She was made whole. There is no one who interacted with Jesus Christ and went back home the same way. Hallelujah. As I invite the ministry team, As I invite the ministry team, I want to remind you, Jesus is here. The Bible says that wherever two or three are gathered in his name, he is there in their midst. He is right here this morning. And he is saying, my daughter, I came for you this morning. I understand your disappointments. I understand your pain, but I am here to transform you into my likeness. And I'll ask the rest of us to stand. The rest of us to stand. And if you want to be prayed for, just walk to the front because he will beautify you. He will make your life just like his. Do not walk out when you are double bent. That morning the woman came in and she could not walk straight. Mm. She could not walk straight. But Jesus sought him out and Jesus said, come to me. What we call an amazing grace. Amazing grace. Grace that cannot let you go. His mercy that cannot let you go. Mercy that says, no, you cannot go on this way. I came that you may have life and have it in abundance. Just take a step of faith as you walk to the front. Because Jesus is willing. He is willing. Including those who are up there. If you want Jesus to mend your life, you can just take a step of faith and walk to the front. Walk right here. That day Jesus broke all protocols. <laughs> because protocol had said that a woman cannot get into the place where men were sitting. But Jesus broke all protocols. This morning he is breaking all protocols. He is not going to observe any of the protocols. He is breaking all of them so that he can reach out to you. He is breaking every protocol, all laws, so that he can reach out to you. His mercy is saying no. His mercy is saying no. I'm not letting you go. I'm not letting you go. 
And he is changing your name. <laughs> he is calling you a son of Abraham. Why a son of Abraham? Because every blessing that the Jews were supposed to be enjoying were attached to Father Abraham. Today, every blessing that we are supposed to be enjoying is attached to our Father Abraham. And that blessing is yours too. It is yours too. It is yours too. So do not walk out when you're double bent. Do not walk out in the pain. Oh, shake it. He sees your tears. He sees your tears. He sees your tears. And he's right here. He's right here this morning. Do not hesitate. And do not go home with the pain. Don't go home with the pain of rejection. Don't go home with the pain of betrayal. Mm -mm. Don't go home with that pain. Don't go home with that pain. Jesus is here. Oh God, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor, Jesus. Keep coming. Just keep coming. Jehovah, we thank you. And maybe you are there. You've never given your life to Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is the moment you can come and know the Lord Jesus. He wants to beautify your life. He wants to beautify your life. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. As you walked in, he saw you. My beautifier, you've taken away the shame. You've taken away the pain. You made my life so beautiful My beautifier You've taken away the shame You've taken away the pain You've made me just like you My beautifier You've taken away the shame oh. You've taken away the pain You made my life so beautiful My beautifier You've taken away the shame You've taken away the pain You made me just like you Just like you Just like you Just like you Ooh. You've taken away the pain You made me just like you Hallelujah Father we thank you, we bless you Keep coming, keep coming. Just walk to the front. Hallelujah. So beautiful. My beautifier. You've taken away the shame. You've taken away the pain. You made me just like you. My beautifier.
you, Jesus. We give you all the glory, all the honor. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're there, you need to give your life to Jesus. You need to give your life to Jesus. This is the moment. This is the time. Hallelujah. You're a great God, Jesus. Your name is worthy, Jesus. Jesus, we thank you. You're sovereign, my God. Your sovereign Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Mercy say no. I'm not gonna let you go. I'm not gonna let you sleep away. You don't have to be afraid. Mercy say no. Sin will never take control Life and death stood face to face Darkness tried to steal my life away Mercy said no Mercy said no I'm not gonna let you go I'm not gonna let you sleep away You don't have to be afraid Mercy said no Sin will never take control Life and death stood face to face Darkness tried to steal my life away Mercy said no. 